A headphone, perhaps like none other, and yet a very similar design. On the channel we have reviewed planar, dynamic, balanced armatures, and the list is endless. But here is the very first electrostatic system. The British company Warwick have designed and updated their original Sonoma M1 system, the Brevera. Shall we talk? A special thank you goes out to Warwick Acoustics for sending this unit in for review. It's very, very much appreciated. Warwick Acoustic are a UK-based company, so this entire system itself is designed and manufactured in the UK, I believe. It's part of a whole, it's an ecosystem. I'm genuinely excited getting this unit in for review because the hype in our community was off the charts, especially those boys who heard it at Munich. And when Golden Sounds Cam got this in house and started ranting and raving about it, I was genuinely, genuinely curious to see what the deal was. A special thank you goes out to Martin for actually setting this up and Mimic Audio and Cam from Golden Sounds. I really do appreciate it. As you can see, it's a very small unit. This is designed to be placed on your desk, not to be touched, not to be swapped out with something else, the DAC part, the amp part. This is not the conventional stuff you see behind us. This is a fully enclosed electrostatic system where this driver cannot work with another amplifier, where this amplifier energizer cannot work with the headphones you see behind us. This is a singular unit. And yet, this unit can drive the original Sonoma M1 headphones and this Brevera, now released, can be used with the original Sonoma M1 Energizer, which is basically this one. They've not touched this part of the unit. This is a 6,000 pound unit, $6,000 probably in the US. Look down in the comment section for the latest pricing. This one is the silver unit, but you can also get this in black. As you can see, it's a very small unit. This actually reminds me very much of the HDVD 800 and HDVD 820 from Sennheiser, that sort of designed amplifier where it's thin, barrel shaped and narrow and sits on your desk, doesn't take up too much space, very, very well constructed out of aluminium. You can see these wavy line vents. This is to dissipate heat because this is a single ended, high performing class A FET amplifier. Energizer for the sake of this setup, obviously, but still amplifying the signal. Shall we take a tour around the unit and see what we get? First and foremost, looking at the back of the unit, we have a on and off switch. I wish this was on the front, but it's not too much of a big deal because this unit usually gets left on most of the time, I'll be honest with you. And it's very tactile, very clicky, very premium feeling. It doesn't feel cheap, to be honest with you. None of this unit feels cheap at all. Um, it's dense, it's very, very dense and very well constructed too. Next to the on and off switch, we have a barrel connection for the power supply. This partners with this switch mode power supply. It's in two parts, half of it in here and half of it inside the amplifier, obviously. Operating at such a high band frequency, around 85 kilohertz, is so that there is no leakage into the audio signal when there is switching done. It's nicely built, it's not too bad. Power supply, it's cord covered, though, bringing it back actually onto frame, you do find that um, you really have to kind of yank the cord to actually get those kinks out, but there is some form of memory in here so that it will keep that shape. So if you do bend this around another equipment at the back like that, it will keep this shape like this, which is, Handy or annoying depending on who you are. And obviously, as you can see, the barrel connection correlating with the power supply connection at the back of the unit screws in. This is a high bias voltage amplifier. 
1350 volts DC to be exact. This runs considerably higher than traditional electrostatic systems, which usually cruise around 250 to about 400, 500 or so, I believe. The bigger brother, the Aperio, runs even higher at 1800 volts. That's why you cannot use the Brevera headphones with the Aperio system or vice versa. This headphone is only for this energizer. Using a fixed frequency switcher, this power supply provides three times the amount of power that this unit requires so that there is plenty of headroom. And obviously, like I stated just previously, that um, operating at such a high frequency band, there's no chance of that leaking into the audio signal at all. And it's been stellar when it comes to that. The other part of the power supply is inside the unit, providing all the stages of low noise and high current stages. So you've got nothing to worry about in regards to swapping power supplies. I don't think you even can, to be honest with you. This is an enclosed ecosystem so that everything is supplied for you and everything is of the absolute topmost caliber. Next, we have the digital inputs. We have USB-B. This can input 32-bit, 384 kilohertz, and coax 24-bit 192. Then a pair of RCA inputs and a 3.5 input, high-low gain. This only applies to the analog inputs. This does not apply to anything else, obviously. And then we have a switch at the front. This is to change between the inputs from the analogs and obviously the digital inputs being USB or coax. Let me spit this unit around. It's very light, uh, but very dense. It's kind of odd. It's a very nice balance. This is the headphone out. This is the input switch from the analogs and the digital. This is a fully digital interpolated digital volume, obviously. No stepped attenuator here. But there is quite a lot to say about this unit in regards to the digital realm. The chipset inside the unit is the Sabre ES918 in mono configuration, so one per side. And in line with this, because the unit is fully digital internally and it uses DSP correction to convey and to correct and to give the frequency response Warwick desires, it has a analog to a digital converter too. Flagship AKM chip. ESS for the out, AKM for the in, and then conversion basically. So whatever DAC you put through this with the RCA input or the 3.5, you find that it's re-digitalized from analog to digital again before going through to the drivers. And it does a very good job, I'll be honest with you. So most of the time when I tested other DACs with it, which we'll get onto in the equipment pairing section, etc., for as limited as it is, obviously, in that realm, um, I found using the internal DAC yielded far stronger results than something else. So basically, you're covered. 32-bit, 384 kilohertz for the USB-B, and like I stated, 24192 for the uh, coax input. Warwick have gone the extra mile. Using the RCA input and the 3.5 input, you will not find the same signal path for both of them. One of them being low, obviously, and the other being high. They use separate channels to the endpoint, basically to the output stage, which is fantastic. Not everything is bunched together, basically, in simple terms. Using these pair of ESS chips in mono configuration, we get signal to noise ratio of 129 dB. That's pretty freaking high. And the analog to digital conversion cruises around 120 dB. These are some very, very high numbers for an all-in-one system to deliver what you're all here for, the sound. But before that, we actually need to look at the drivers. <music> the
This is the Brevera headphones themselves, constructed with no expense spared. It feels absolutely incredible. Electrostatics usually feel so flimsy. I mean, I was handling the Shang Senior from hi -Fi Man. That thing's 18,000 pounds and it felt as though I was looking at a toy. I kept picking it up and going, really? 18 grand and you couldn't come up with a better housing or something but this. Let's start at the top. Oh, by the way, on the Aperio flagship, the 24 karat gold one, this was pure gold. It was, I don't think photos does it justice. It was absolutely amazing. We have a very wide headband and very, very plush sponge underneath and very springy. There is no chance of hot spots up here. It's almost like a helmet. It's incredible. This hand-stitched leather from Germany is actually tanned in the United Kingdom by a company that has been around for well over a hundred years now. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it smells like Italian shoes. It's absolutely amazing. And as we work our way downwards, the Adjustable mechanism for the arms is made of aluminium and it's very, very, very stiff actually. There's no chance of this ever changing positions on your head. The headphones tilt forward and back, I would say roughly about 30 degrees and obviously they tilt back and forward like this too. The cups are magnesium alloy injected, which is fantastic. And these pads are also obviously leather. Sniff test, Italian shoes galore. <laughs> Jamie's smiling behind the camera. <laughs> this wavy line that matches basically the energizer itself is what's covering the patented designed electrostatic drivers in this unit. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. These headphones are ultra comfortable, but I think for, for small shaped heads, there is a tendency to clamp a little, a little harder than usual. But if you're opening this up, if you've got a large noggin, like so, I don't think you'll find much of a clamp at all. It just seals very well because the seal is essential to the bass response. This is the cloth covered, very heavy cable. This cable is actually manufactured and collaborated with Limo and Atlas. Uh, my Sesvara cable has an Atlas connector and it's freaking awesome. So the Limo connectors are absolutely fantastic. This cloth covered cable is silver plated copper, obviously, of the highest grade, interweaved with Kevlar for stiffness and for rigidity. And not only that, but for strength. I don't think this cable is gonna break. It's a little stiff, it keeps its shape a little bit and it is a little audiophonic, but not by too much. I, I've not had too much problems myself personally, but we'll get onto the caveat section and discuss some of the things that um, I think should be improved in the next one, but there aren't many. So bear that in mind. Um, this is most likely one of the best systems you're ever gonna get around the $6,000 region, and I am not exaggerating. When I compare it to the systems that I will tell you in the equipment section, you will see for yourself. But going back to the hardware first, obviously. Nice cable, keeps its shape a little bit, and very strong, but I wish for more of a traditional cable like a planar headphone or a, pl or a dynamic headphone, but obviously that's impossible. Those amount of voltages, you really have to make sure that everything's safe, sturdy, strong, and very little chance of breaking. So this is the Brevera. This is the Sonoma M1, and this is the Kevlar infused silver plated copper cable. The patented technology created by Warwick, unlike a traditional electrostatic driver, where a thin membrane is overlaid with a conductive material stretched over a pair of charged grids, Warwick uses their patented high-precision electrostatic laminate, stretching this film in the X and Y axis, suspending on an insulated stator single for the Brevera, dual for the Aperio, 
you find these cells on the laminate consisting of eight cells per side, then the unit is, and finally the unit's covered with this steel grate mesh. Obviously, the driver and the energizer is paired very carefully for optimum performance. And here are some of the other specifications that if you're interested in, pause the screen now. I think that covers the hardware. Beautifully well designed, very premium feeling. For those of you lacking real estate on your desk, extraordinarily compact for the performance you get. I have been enamored with this system day by day when it landed for review. Its price to performance ratio is absolutely off the charts. With that, shall we throw it on the test bench and start listening? Let's discuss the sound. So what do you get when you plug this system in compared to other systems? Does the price tag warrant the sound quality? And it's rare to be surprised. It's not often you're overcome by the music, so much so that you think, how is this possible in this form factor like this? We run through some of the highest end equipment in the industry here. If Jamie can spin around, you can see the HM1, the Bliss, the May, Monoblock Benchmarks, Serene. It's all been here. They're all here. They're all being reviewed. Those exceed 10, 20, 30,000 per system. But to actively construct a system that costs 6,000 and sounds like this, I've not managed to do it in four weeks. It's very difficult. So let's talk about how it sounds. What I'm reminded of when I put the Brevera on, quite frankly, is a lot like the LCD5 on the best chain I ever heard it on and that was the all Hypsos Serene Dave and M scaler. It's neutral with a touch of warmth in the mid-range. Vocal is right there. It's the central unit of the soundscape. You are there to see the artist. Everything else around it is secondary. Primary is the singer. Her or his voice is well textured, extraordinarily well balanced tonally from the bass to the treble throughout the mid-range. You get excellent reverberation of the chest cavity. Vocals do not appear thin. And there's a reason why we're starting with vocals. Because it plays such a big role with the Sonoma M1 system. It captures the soul of the music. You are pulled in into the lyrics. The equipment disappears. So with that, I will tell you, if you are an equipment head, a gear head, this system's not for you. If you fancy swapping DACs, amplifiers, 10 headphones in one sitting, say bye to this system. But I can promise you, if you're putting 6,000 on the table and going, I want the best, get me what you can, I don't want to have to think about anything again. It's very much like iPhone owners. We just want the experience. We don't care about the specifications, nitty gritty, all the hell of it. And except the Sonoma actually gives you the specs. 129 dB signal to noise ratio, <laughs> that's ridiculous. And what they've managed to do, how the music articulates itself with a pair of mono config Sabre ESS chips makes you realize it's never about numbers. It's all always about the implementation. Tonally, it's lush. It's never fatiguing, and yet you've got nice treble extension. There's a slight elevation to my ears around the six kilohertz where I'm usually sensitive to, but this conveys the information just enough. Never on the cusp of being uncomfortable or pulling me out of the music. The attacks from snare drums is realistic. They're never dry, never dull, and never pillowy. They've got the full articulation of what's around the snare drum within the environment it was recorded in. For example, a drum booth or a hall 
or even a stadium. I think you realize the quality of a system, the quality of an audio device, when every single song you listen to, scrolling down, all of them, one is not alike to another. Because no engineer goes into the studio and goes, okay, I'm going to give you this song. It should sound like a song, and it should sound like yesterday's song and the song you listened to prior. Every song shrinks, expands, separates the way the engineer intended those instruments to be conveyed within the stage. And obviously because of the electrostatic driver, speed, transparency, detail retrieval is off the charts, obviously. We are talking Sesvara levels, and at this level of the $6,000, like so attempting to throw Sesvaras on a $6,000 chain or create a chain like that, far surpassing it. Does Sesvara sound better than this? Do me a favor, press that subscribe button, you know? It's, it's right there, it, it, it won't hurt you. I promise you, probably save a puppy too. And you can actually scroll to the comparison section if you're impatient. But for the time being, at $6,000, Rivera can't be touched. The sound signature is warm, but ever so slightly. And this uh, warmth emphasizes itself within the mid-range where electric guitars, tone from female singers, electroacoustic guitars, etc., are emphasized and it's very well articulated. There is always a caveat with electrostatics and that is the punch and the bass region. And I'm very, very, very glad to say in this scenario, this one does not have any problems delivering deep sub bass levels of tone. Managing to sustain the 20 Hertz region, not rolling off, and yet leading a nice support to the mid bass region so that it doesn't feel overly bloated in the mid bass region. You've got superb punch and attack taking a track from Infected Mushroom's test album for the channel, Converting Vegetarians, that kick drum from the very first track tries to concave your eardrums, but in a very balanced way, in a very articulate way. It's never pillowy and it's never overemphasized where that region of the frequency response impeaches on the upper bass region and the upper bass region therefore colliding into the lower mid range. The Brevera is a very easy listen. It's not just for listening to high quality music. I've actually been using it as a daily driver, catching up on YouTube, catching up on TV programs. And it's extraordinarily good for gaming. Some headphones like the RAL CA1A over there, you find actually is very genre specific and track specific, though superb. I never found a genre of music with a Brevera that I thought, nah, not this one. It just works. Implementing DSP correction, they're using a 64-bit uh, Exynos processor. They have done such an incredible job making sure that everything's always well balanced. I can't praise this headphone enough. It's articulate, it's transparent, it's detail retrieval and speed is off the charts. It's got fantastic punch, excellent sub bass region, well detailed extension on the treble region without being fatiguing, good air, and stage is good. Stage is not on the level of Sesvaras on a super high end chain, but stage opens up big. And it's a spherical 360 degree landscape. But maybe I can convey this to you better. Let me paint you a picture. When I listen to the Sonoma M1 and Brevera, I envision this. I close my eyes, take a step, and open my eyes again. It feels as though I'm looking in, into the most clearest mirror I can possibly find. The mirror is superimposed on a black glass. 
and yet all the images are silvery white. Every instrument seems to be etched. Everything around you seems to be etched out perfectly with surgical precision. When a guitar rises within the mix, it feels as though it's been drawn by an artist. Its circumference, its shape, its contours pop off of the stage. Usually there is murkiness in bass, where it feels as though your mind's eye sees a darker soundscape. But with the Brevera, it's as clear and crystalline as the treble region. So you envision a face, maybe someone you know, you like, you love, you care for. It feels as though you can see every contour of the face, every pore, every eyelash, every speck of colour in the eyes, every muscle structure and movement when they smile. There doesn't seem to be anything that's distorted, unrealistic, overemphasized or underemphasized. It really is a fantastic sounding system. To my ears, it's one of those systems where I have difficulty finding fault with it. How does bad music sound on this? Badly mastered music. You can listen to the song. You can appreciate the song but it tells you you have shit taste in music, but it doesn't take you out of the environment. I'll give you an example. Taking that trashy track, Zombie from the Cranberries, is dirty. It's not really well mastered in the slightest, and it just sounds god awful, to be honest with you, yet it's a great song. You can appreciate the song, but none of part of the track really hurts your ears, where on a Sasvara, it will tell you, you need to reconsider your life's choices. And that's the difference. Due to the DSP correction, it conveys the perfect balance for that song every time. So let's do some comparisons now. We have a variety of systems on the desk. This is the hollow stack. The May, the Bliss and the Red streamer. This is the HM1 from Mike Zoll. This is the Luxury and Precision P6 Pro using the Ambient Acoustics Mad 24. I've been trying to build a system for 6000 like for like to match the abilities of the Brevera. The first system I'm going to take is this one here next to me. This is the CMA15. One of the best price to performance ratios amp DAX on the market right now. $2,500. Yet with Sasvaras, it brings the total up to eight and a half thousand. That's $2,500 more. That's a third more than the actual asking price of Barrera. And yet Sasvara doesn't hit as hard. Stage is bigger, timbre is better, but you don't get the sub bass and the mid bass punch the way you do on Barrera. Detail retrieval and the ability to convey the information, the transparency, Barrera wins. It's a better system. That is the cheapest Sasvara system I found. With Bliss, you would have to introduce a DAC. The May, then you're talking about a $16,000 system. Can't be done. Okay, move on to the HM1. You're already out of price. That's eight and a half thousand. That can't be done either. The only system I have found that I think I could take just as well as Brevera, but completely defeats the whole headphone at a desk, and then you're introducing IEMs, which is sometimes a no-no and then this unit is not quite good in the USB. See, I'm already making compromises. But for sound quality, the luxury and precision, this is 4,000. Ambient Acoustics Mad 24, three and a half thousand. You're already exceeding the 6,000 limit by 1,500. 
and there you get incredible levels of performance, almost as far off, on the go. Is it as good as the Brevera? I think they trade blows and I don't think it beats it and I don't think Brevera beats it either. And this is why. Detail retrieval, Brevera edges it out. Transparency, due to the electrostatic nature, if I'm being honest and true to myself, I would say Brevera beats it out. But textural information, separation, low end, MAD24 takes it. Stage, I think they're on par. Sometimes MAD24 seems bigger, if you can believe it. I know it's an IEM, but they have got to be heard to be believed. Yeah, and for the other 1,500, I might have to sell a kidney. I don't think they fetch that much on eBay anymore, so yeah. Um, it's more expensive, and it's not at a desk, it's an IEM. Well done, Warwick. I don't think it can be touched. I've tried. What a system. Let's talk about the conclusion. The Brevera system, right now, is the best value for money in the super flagship realm. It's very difficult to beat. If you're looking for an all-in-one system, you don't want to play around with all that kind of stuff. You don't want to constantly interchange DACs and amplifiers. You know who you are. If you've got a beautiful desk, a nice 42-inch OLED TV, maybe a PlayStation 5 or a nice PC, the Brevera will suit your gaming needs, your daily driver needs, and kicking back to high-end audio. Talking of high-end audio, if you like reviews such as this, consider subscribing, pressing the notification icon so you don't miss the next one, but that's not really that important. I'd switch mine all off, so it's up to you. I really don't mind. But occasionally check on the channel because you really don't want to miss some of the reviews that are going to be coming. HM1, Bliss, Caldera, Luxury and Precision P6 Pro, Hugo 2, Rals SA1A, and the list is endless. There are so many reviews coming May. And all of these reviews will be on Patreon first and then YouTube later. You can join our private Telegram chat or the public one. All the information will be down below. Until the next one. Thank you, Warwick, for sending us the Brevera. What a wild ride. I'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, by the way, the $30,000 Aperio is coming for review too, but shh.